Hello and welcome to Hamara Itihas Archives. We are here to record the oral testimony of Trilochan Singh, who was born in 1927 in Peshawar, who worked with the Frantya Gandhi, Barcha Khan. He was jailed in Peshawar, then again in Lahore, and has led an amazing life. But why don't you hear his story from him himself? <laughs> The design of the wheel shall be that of the wheel chakra with a pair on the foundation. It's a privilege and honor to interview Trilochan Singh Ji. You are an eminent freedom fighter. Tell me where were you born and when were you born? I was born in Peshawar Sadar on 1st October 1927. How is it that you were inspired to join the freedom struggle? Who were your parents? My parents. Uh, along with a group of Punjabis from Campbellpur district in Rawalpindi area. They had in some years, I don't remember which year, they had migrated to Peshawar and settled in Peshawar Sadar as a small businessman. My father's name Sujan Singh, my mother's name Harnam Kaur. But, uh, how did you join the freedom struggle? Uh, I was a student of 10th class. I used to regularly read newspapers. So I read about uh, the call of Quit India given by Gandhi at a Congress session in Bombay on 9th August 1942. That somehow uh, impressed me. And uh, as a first step, we closed the main gate of the school laid down there as our part of Quit India movement. Police came, they tried to drag me away from that gate and then one Mr. Muhammad Ayub, he was known as Captain Ayub because he was a captain of a hockey team, a rich prosperous uh, uh, resident there who lived close by to the school, when he learned about it, he rushed and uh, stopped the police from dragging me or hitting me. Anyway, police took me to the lockup and then they uh, took me to the jail. How old were you at that time? 15 years. Only 15? Yes. And how long were you in Peshawar jail? About oh, two months. The uh, sentries or uh, the policemen, uh, they were uh, Pathans. They were very sympathetic. Not only because they felt that I'm a young boy, but they had themselves feeling for India's freedom struggle. Yes, so tell us about the Pathans. Who were they? guided by and why were they so sympathetic? Later that I learned was that uh, these Pathans, they were led by two brothers, Dr. Khan Saab, the elder brother, and Abdul Ghaffar Khan. Dr. Khan Saab uh, incidentally turned out to be the first uh, Pathan who went to London for higher studies of medicine. He did his MBBS in London. He married a British woman, returned to Peshawar. And uh, along with his brother, Abdul Ghaffar Khan, they were leading the freedom struggle. Then Abdul Ghaffar Khan, like Congress Seva Dal, he had built his volunteers and he used to call them uh, Surkh Posh. They used to wear red uh, uniform, so they were called red shirts in English and surk posh in uh, Pashto. How did he make the uh, Pathans who were basically revolutionary, yes. how did they make, he make them so, non-violent? were basically, as I said, that uh, it is said about the Pathan that a Pathan is born with a rifle and dies with a bullet. Despite this kind of a background, 
because of Abdul Ghawar Khan's leadership, the way he went about preach non-violence, then as a part of uh, Quit India movement, Ratchers used to come from their villages to the city and they will picket the courts as a part of 1942 Quit India movement, picketing the courts so that the courts are closed. You see, closing the administration, uh, going against, uh, going to the government offices, demonstrating there, wearing, of course, their uh, uh, uniform. He would order the uh, volunteers to disperse. They would refuse. Then he would order the police to uh, remove them forcibly. They tried to remove them forcibly, but they would resist. Mm -hmm. Then they were asked to do the lati charge. So they used to hit uh, the surk posh, the red shirt volunteers, picketing the courts. They used to hit them with the lattes in such a manner that they would uh, vomit blood, fall on the ground. And volunteers used to come, put them in the stretcher and take them to the nearby dispensary of Dr. Khan Saab. You've seen this yourself? Yes. That they were hit till they vomited and they would not uh, hit back? As a child volunteer, I was also there. We used to uh, carry the um, uh, wounded uh, red shirts in the stretchers to the dispensary of Dr. Khan Saab. But at that time, in nine, around 1930, there was this famous incident where 200 yes, people were see, killed. Yes, that, that was uh, much earlier. Uh, then, of course, I was only about three years old. Uh, it is only later that I learned uh, about that. Tell us about the Kissa. The Kissa Khani Bazaar was a the main bazaar. Was and even today, it's the main bazaar of uh, uh, Peshawar city. So uh, the Congress people had taken out a procession, a demonstration in the Kissa Khani Bazaar, shouting slogans against the British, led by Ghaffar Khan. So police tried to stop them, disperse them, they did not. Then they used a lati charge. Even then they did not. Then they brought armed vehicles. And f uh, the armed vehicle, uh, the soldiers fired at that uh, position, killing uh, scores of people uh, right in the Kisakhani Bazaar. The result was that the movement became all more pervasive all over the frontier province. And, uh, Instead of uh, uh, people being intimidated by such zulum, such uh, cruelty by the uh, British government, they in fact became uh, more uh, 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 much involved, overwhelming number of people, Pathans, in uh, the, all the six districts of uh, Frontier Province. They started in their own uh, cities and villages, the kind of a movement. That is what I say that uh, the total population of uh, Frontier Province at that time was 30 lakh, 3 million. And uh, imagine that in 1942-43, almost 1 lakh were uh, either in jail or they were interned in their own homes. Tell me then, how did you end up in Lahore? You see, uh, after passing matriculation, uh, for my uh, college studies, I first went to Amritsar, Jain Khalsa College, which was a very famous college. Its principal was Jyot Singh, a very famous uh, educationist. So there I started uh, uh, lecturing, giving speeches, organizing students as a part of the ongoing Quit India movement. Uh, in fact, uh, I remember that in the hostel, I used to have uh, two very prominent persons. One, Balbir Singh, who later be uh, became India's uh, greatest hockey player, center forward, okay. Balbir Singh. Okay. And Dharam Singh, who also became the uh, most uh, famous uh, fullback of hockey team. All right. So they were with you in Khalsa? They were also uh, sort of uh, my fellow. Uh, dwellers in the hostel. But uh, 
finding that I was uh, actively demonstrating the uh, and organizing the student, the principal one day called me and he said that, look, this is an ultimatum. Either you stop your studies altogether or you leave the college. So he threatened you? He threatened me. So I chose to leave the college. So after leaving uh, Amritsar College, I went to Lahore. Yes. And in Lahore, I joined uh, Dayal Singh College. Dayal Which Singh. was also a hotbed uh, of politics at that time. It was the center of the freedom struggle. And Dayal Singh College, uh, incidentally, was uh, located right in the uh, central part of the city yes. of uh, Lahore. And uh, uh, it might surprise you, it was a co-educational college. Uh, I am talking of 1943. Uh, people uh, Were think, there women freedom fighters? Did you know anyone yes, who was active? Uh, in fact, uh, you will read in this, uh, uh, in my, this uh, sketch. In your memoirs, that refer, yes. In my memoir, uh, that um, uh, uh, when I started uh, this uh, in Dyal Singh College, uh, organizing the student demonstration, etc. I was, first of all, uh, there was a uh, student union. There was election for the student union. Did you stand for it? So I stand for assistant secretary because I was only a first year student. I couldn't contest more Did I you mean, win? higher uh, office. So uh, these girls led by Hamida, a, a Muslim girl, you know. Hamida Banu. Hamida Banu. They, actively <laughs> campaigned for me. I was elected, you know. Uh, but uh, but what are your experiences in Lahore? What what did you do in Lahore and yes, what did you Lahore, see? Uh, you see that uh, soon thereafter, I started, uh, I mean, uh, students from different colleges learned about my um, uh, speeches, about my uh, organization and all that. And you know, Lahore uh, uh, had many colleges. In encyclopedia, it was called City of Colleges. There used to be Khalsa College, Amr, DAV College, Sanatandam College, Islamia College, FC College, Norman College, so many colleges. But were the students very active at that time? So I was, uh, 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 fortunately, successful in organizing in different colleges demonstrations uh, in support of the Quit India movement, you know. Uh, and that uh, ultimately resulted that uh, I was arrested. Uh, you were arrested once again in Lahore. In Lahore. And yes. this time, where were you and for how long were you arrested? So I was uh, put in the lockup. I had to pass my stools there within the, uh, that small uh, place, eat my food also over there. And uh, one day, uh, Something happened, I don't remember, but uh, uh, I, I, uh, uh, that deputy subordinate police, his name I remember, Baba Jagat Singh Bhalla. Uh, I went to, into his office and uh, or he had called me his office. There was a roller on his table. I just started playing with it. He took off the roller and hit me on my, the back of my hand. He said, how dare you behave like this? You're sitting in front of a, a police officer. So anyway, he... So he hit you with a ruler because he, he felt you weren't paying yes. attention to him. Uh, it was a summer, you see. Days and next day he uh, ordered the police constable to take me out of the lockup, stripped me all, made neck and naked and uh, lie uh, in that sun uh, on the ground. And one or two police constable, they walked on my back. I was lying on my stomach, you know. So that kind of a torture. Uh, so you I certainly faced some police torture as well inside Lahore. So anyway, uh, I mean, uh, uh, back in Peshawar, my people learned uh, about my arrests and tortures. So my father and my maternal uncle, they came uh, to Lahore. Uh, it took them two days to uh, find out where I was locked up. So they came there, uh, but they, they were not allowed to talk to me. They came the next day, uh, so probably they were allowed to have a word with me. So I told them, don't worry. Uh, it is just a part of uh, 
the moment. So that's how they kept the anxious parents waiting while torturing the young boys. But what did you see at that time? What mahal kya tha? What was because Lahore was a hotbed of the freedom struggle at that time. So what did you see? You see, actually Lahore was not much of a center of freedom struggle at that time. When I went there, there was a few demonstration, a few procession, not but not much. So I, I was very happy that uh, my campaigning and going to different colleges. I used to uh, one when um, uh, students of col different colleges learnt about my role, my speeches, so they would invite me to the college. So I would go to DAV College, Nathadam College, uh, FC College. I used to speak there. So that built up a movement. And uh, the result was that uh, uh, eventually when uh, I was extant, you know, so... Uh, you were extant uh, from Lahore? I was arrested. Uh, one day police came to my uh, hostel, Majiti Hostel. It was known as Majiti Hostel. And uh, they swooped into my cubicle and arrested me. Uh, so I was uh, uh, taken to Lahore Fort Jail. So I spent about uh, uh, three to four weeks uh, there in the jail and uh, then I was released. Okay. But uh, an internment order was served on me that I could not leave uh, my hostel after 6 p.m. and before 6 a.m. Okay. Well, one of the evenings, uh, I just uh, walked into a famous Lawrence Garden, which was close to my hostel. When I was just loitering in the garden, it was about uh, 4.30 or 5 p.m. Some people recognized me because they had seen me pub addressing public meeting. So gathered around me and asked me to speak. So uh, I started speaking to them in Lawrence Garden and became a public meeting. The police uh, men came, they seized me uh, over there and again took me to jail. So you're once again in jail. So I was again back into the jail. Uh, but uh, next day, they uh, uh, took me to the hostel. And uh, next morning, again, police uh, batch came and they said, served on me an order that you must leave boundaries of Punjab within 24 hours. And where did you go then? As the students uh, uh, in the hostel learned about the police raid at my cubicle, so they gathered, they shouted, started. Anyway, they asked me to pack up. They, I packed up, put me into the jeep, uh, jeep and took me to uh, Lahore Railway Station. Uh, the people who had learned about it and the students, they followed the jeep. It became a kind of a procession, you know. And uh, But anyway, at uh, Lahore uh, Railway Station, I was put into the frontier mail. Uh, one constable was there with me to go back to Peshawar. So you went back to Peshawar from Lahore after yet another this uh, was in arrest. December 1944. December 1944. But before you, we, we leave Push Lahore, tell me a little bit about the leaders there and what you saw and other people who were working there who may not be alive anymore. Punjab, unfortunately, was not very actively involved in the Quit India movement to begin with. And uh, it was uh, later on that uh, that movement was built up and uh, uh, I'm glad that I could play a small role. So tell me, Trulochan Singh Ji, that now we are back in Peshawar. You you were now extern from Lahore and you're back in Peshawar. And this is what year? 1945, end of December 44. End of December 44, all right. So uh, what did I you do a, in Peshawar? I, I was a student of uh, FSC, second year. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I had to do was to complete my FSC. Peshawar had only two colleges. One was Islamia College, one was Edwards College. Only Islamia College had science faculty 
Edward College did not. So I went to uh, Jain Islamia College. When they somehow learnt about my expulsion from externment from Punjab and uh, involvement in the freedom movement, they refused to take me as a student. So you didn't have any college admission either. You were externed and you were without an admission. And uh, so then uh, I uh, uh, went to Dr. Khan Saab. You see, Dr. Khan Saab was the chief, earlier chief minister of the Frontier Promise. You're talking about uh, Abdul Ghaffar Khan's fa elder brother. You know, in 1935, the British government had passed an act granting some kind of a self-government to India. Under that, elections were held in 1937 for the first time, general election in India. And in NWFP, there were two uh, provinces which were dominated by Muslim, Bengal and Frontier Province. And Punjab, sorry. So in Frontier Province, it was Congress led by Dr. Khan Saab and Ghaffar Khan, which won the elections and formed the ministry. And Dr. Khan Saab became the first Congress chief minister of uh, Frontier Province. In 1940, Gandhi had given again a call of boycotting, with the result that Congress ministries all over India had resigned. So the NWFP ministry led by Dr. Khan Saab, they also resigned. So I was made a member of All India Congress Committee. All right. And you were how old then? Uh, I was uh, then uh, 18 or 19. You were a 18. member of All India co co Congress Committee? So I was, uh, I remained a member of All India Congress Committee for 24 years. Uh, and. Uh, so I used to attend the sessions of uh, AICC or New Congress Committee. So what were the proceedings? Because partition was also, was it not discussed? Partition was discussed in 1946 onward. All right. So you were witness to those discussions? Yes, uh, we were witness to a discussion. In what, a, was, what was the feeling? Did people want partition? It was in June 1947. Uh, even the British government was, had started negotiation with the Congress in 1946 for granting India self-government. It was a, Congress was led by Nehru at that time, negotiating with them. The Congress Working Committee, Abdul Ghaffar Khan, Khan was one of the members of the Congress Working Committee. So ultimately, in June 1947, in Delhi, the Congress Working Committee adopted the resolution accepting partition. Abdul Ghaffar Khan did not agree. He walked out of the Working Committee meeting and went straightway to Gandhi, who was staying in Harijan Colony in Delhi. And there he said the famous words, they are, we are being thrown to the wolves. There is a book also written by Gandhi's grandson. The title of the book is Thrown to the Wolves. So you, what you are documenting is that you are a witness to the fact that Gaffal, Gaffar I, Khan... I was at that time uh, uh, a, a small colleague of Abdullah Khan. I used to accompany him uh, everywhere. And uh, that is uh, how I had come to uh, with him. Uh, to Delhi and uh, when he walked out of the Warren Committee meeting, uh, I walked with him to Harijan Colony to Gandhi where he said to Gandhi that we are being thrown to the wolves. This is an amazing fact that you have actually witnessed this historical moment where Abdul Ghaffar Khan is opposing partition, which uh, a resolution that has been passed by the All India Working Committee and you have accompanied him out of that, uh, out of that meeting, to, and then all the way to, to the Harijan Colony. Gandhi in Harijan Colony, here in Delhi. You were with him when he went to meet Gandhi, or did you? Yes, stay yes, out? I was with the uh, Farhan uh, when he met Gandhi in Harijan Colony. If you could tell us now, this is a very important moment in history that Khan Abdul Khan Ghaffar, Ghaffar Khan has uh, refused to accept the partition. He has walked out of the meeting, and you have accompanied him 
to meet Gandhi where he is protesting. In the Harijan Tell us. Colony. Yes. And uh, there Ghaffar Khan told uh, uh, Gandhi ji that uh, the Congress Work Committee, by uh, accepting the partition of India, the uh, creation of Pakistan, is uh, tantamount to throwing us to the wolves. And what did Gandhi ji say? Gandhi ji certainly said that I agree with you. Gandhi ji said, I agree with you. I agree with you. I, he very tried to console him, you see, because uh, he, he, he uh, imagined that uh, uh, because according to partition, NWFP was to go to the Pakistan. Ghaffar Khan was the uh, resident of uh, uh, NWFP only, yes. you see. So that is why he used the word. You have thrown us to the wolves. There were uh, riots all over the province, but not as much as in Punjab. When these riots started, the red shirts, volunteers, Pathan, they used to walk from their villages, come to the city and guard the Hindu Sikh Mahallas. Amazing. And the Muslim League by then had become quite strong. Muslim Leaguers used to come and spit in their faces. But they did that. They called Hindu six coffers. Mm -hmm. you know? But they and, still went out of their way to save them. And yet the uh, Pathan red shirts in their uniform, they used to uh, guard the Hindu Sikh Mahallas against uh, uh, communal attacks. This is an amazing testimony. You are talking about the Pathans guarding the Hindus and the Sikhs. But uh, just to go back a bit. You are witness to the fact that Ghaffar Khan has said that you are throwing us to the wolves. You are witness to the fact that Gandhiji agrees with him and tries to console him. Why, in your opinion, did partition happen? Who, 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 who conceded to it? By then, you see, uh, Muslim League had become very strong. Jinnah had emerged as a very powerful uh, leader of the Muslims of uh, India. If it remains a united India, it might mean continuous communal rights between Muslims and Hindus and Sikhs, and this killing would not stop. So they thought that uh, perhaps a better, uh, in the com comparatively better uh, solution is accepting partition. So in now that we're doing this recording right now in 2019, in retrospect, do you feel that it was, uh, what was partition? Was it a mistake? I don't think so. Because uh, I, I, I think the kind of uh, situation that had developed, at that time it was not possible to envisage that uh, communal right would stop. But what did you so, see in partition then? So, 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 oh, so it was, no, nobody envisaged that uh, part, when uh, partition would uh, be announced, there would be such kind of a uh, killing that eventually did happen. Certainly, the Muslim leaguers, wherever they could find a way, they were attacking the Hindu Sikh Mohallas. In that situation, the uh, Badshah Khan, Abdukhar Khan was also known as Badshah Khan. Yes. So, he asked his volunteers, Surakbosh, and that is they used to come from their villages and guard the Hindu Singh Mahallas uh, against uh, attacks by uh, Muslim leaguers. How did you settle yourself now when you came? You came and settled yourself in Delhi? Yes, uh, we settled in Delhi. Uh, to begin with, my father uh, used to sit on uh, uh, Patrani of Chandni Chok. He sat on the, on the, on the roadside of Chandni Chok. Selling some small things. Uh, and uh, I also sometimes used to join him. So you started life in independent India after partition, sitting literally on the footpath. Footpath. Must be a very hard times. What were the feelings? Well, uh, it was certainly a hard time. But uh, he started, uh, as I told you, that uh, uh, selling some small things on the patrani of Chandni Chok. Uh, eventually, he f found a shop in Azad Market. 
And where did you live? How did you find a so, home? No, this uh, Paharganj, you said it was an abandoned house. You found an abandoned house of also someone Paharganj who must have was fled a, to Pakistan. Paharganj before partition was a Muslim populated mohalla. So after partition, since they left, so many houses were uh, fell vacant and refugees who had come, they tried to occupy whatever abandoned places that we find. And how many of you were there in the family now in this abandoned house uh, in Baharganj? We, we were quite a, a number of uh, family. We, uh, we were six brothers, two, uh, two sisters and my father mother. So ten people? Yes. Uh, it was a small house in uh, Baharganj, uh, sort of uh, one bedroom, one bedroom, countering room and a small ayata. And, uh, so 10 people in basically one room and, yes. and a small uh, balcony. So, and what, but what was the mood at that time of India? Because India had also just become independent. So what were you seeing around you? To begin with, there was a desperation. There was a feeling of frustration, you see. Uh, having abandoned our uh, living, our homes, you see, to, uh, everything. But as time passed, we started falling in line with the time and we realized that now what is past is literally past and now there is a new future, we have to build the future. Very, very optimistic and progressive. But tell me, what has been your role then after that? What did you, what did you do in independent India in 1950? So, from, uh, I, I first of all started doing uh, this outdoor advertising business. In 1950? 1952 onwards. Outdoor advertising, what is that? Holdings oh. on the roadside. Uh, so eventually that became my major business. And you were also very active in the Congress party? I was the main uh, campaigner for the Congress in the election in Delhi. And uh, till, till 2009. All right, till 2009. And um, in fact, uh, uh, in 72 and other elections, uh, uh, I used to tour the whole of uh, northern India, go to various places, Lucknow, Meerut, uh, and uh, different places, uh, electioneering. I was the main campaigner of Dr. Mohan Singh. The only election he fought and lost. You also campaigned for Dr. Manmohan Singh. So he you has, are first really of all, he stood for Lok Sabha from Delhi, mm -hmm. Delhi South. I was his major campaigner. He, he lost the election. So later he was in the Rajya Sabha. So then I continued to read it. Then of course, uh, I was elected to the Municipal Corporation of Delhi. I became the secretary of the Congress Party, the Municipal Corporation. After the seven or eight years, uh, I was made a member of New Delhi Municipal Council. Then I became the vice chairman of New Delhi Municipal Council. And also you received the Tamra Patra, which is an acknowledgement that you are a freedom fighter. You see that... Uh, 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 a freedom fighter cell was established by the government and uh, the genuine freedom fighters, you had to somehow uh, establish that you were a freedom fighter. Various documents, various witnesses and all that. So then the government started giving pension. Do you get a pension? To the freedom fighters. I was also offered pension but uh, I refused to take pension. Uh, so you had an illustrious life and you worked with the, you've seen the red shirters, you worked with the, the Congress party, the, you've been in jail in Peshawar and in Lahore, you've gone through the bloodbath of partition, sat on a footpath and worked your way up. What finally is your message to independent India's youth? Well, uh, in fact today my major worry is the plight of Muslims in India. 
I think they are living a second class citizen life, which is not good for the future of India. If this continues for uh, another decade or two, that, that means India might head once again for another partition. So, uh, you see, the Muslim population in India is the third largest in the world. And look, where do you find the Muslim? No, no Muslims in parliament, no Muslims in assembly, no Muslims in uh, government offices. I mean, if there are one or two here or there, that means nothing. So this poverty, this backwardness, uh, this illiteracy uh, among the Muslim, that worries me a lot. And what should the right thinking Indian do today? India, well, first of all, India, of course, must do primarily to lift the poor, uh, fight the poverty. You see, illiteracy, poverty, that is the major uh, battle. And then, of course, concentrate on uplifting the Muslims, you see, with uh, their education, they are giving them the job, starting small businesses, involving them, so that they come up. After all, uh, why, why did we uh, uh, adopt the constitution especially for Harijans, backward classes, you see? So you feel that secularism and equality is the most important oh, issue for yes. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Trilochan Singh Ji, for giving us your valuable time and your testimony to the Himara Itihas Archive. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Thank you. Thank you.